the greats, those that have made it to the higher echelons of a particular skill or craft, have recognized the value in failure to the point where they are actively seeking failure because they have recognized that it is within the failure itself that the wisdom is located. That is how we learn. Welcome to Objective Secure. In this episode, we're gonna discuss one of the warrior mindset principles, that being, I will never accept defeat. And there is an obvious translation to that ethos, that being resolve, resilience, toughness, the get knocked down seven times, get up eight mentality. And while that is absolutely accurate, I think we can do better. I think we can take it a little bit farther. And when I hear I will never accept defeat, this to me gets after our relationship with failure. The story that I use in this book is from my time at Walter Reed. And I had been up on my prosthetic for <clears throat> maybe a few weeks, maybe a month. And I was in a training session with my physical therapist in the MATC, which is an acronym that stands for Military Advanced Training Center. And it is an oppressive site. It's, it's indoor training area. <clears throat> it's got an indoor track. Goes all the way around with a rail system actually that's attached to the ceiling. So individuals that are that are having difficulty walking that may likely fall can actually get strapped into this. So if and when they stumble, it actually catches them to prevent them from smacking off the ground. It's got everything you could imagine uh, a treatment facility would have. And it was the place where distinguished visitors or VIPs, that's where they would gravitate towards. And this was in 2013, which Walter Reed was really busy at that time. We had a lot of things going on, multiple different areas of operation around the world. So Walter Reed was busy. And on this particular day, the New York Yankees were actually they're visiting service members, which is awesome. And I can already hear all the grumblings or the, 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 the talking. Me being from Boston, I'm obviously a Red Sox fan, so you, you may assume that I wanted nothing to do with the Yankees because I'm a Red Sox fan. Well, most of that is true. The real reason why I had no interest in the Yankees has nothing to do with the fact that I'm from Boston. It's because when I was in that facility, I was there to work. I was there to conduct business. And my physical therapist, Kelly, did a phenomenal job of safeguarding me from these distinguished visitors that would come and they'd want to engage with wounded service members. So there's a lot of commotion they're doing photos, they're doing autographs for those interested. Me, however, I'm in the middle of my workout. And at this particular time, I'm doing an overhead weight carry walk around the track. So I had what I believe was around 90 pounds on a barbell over my head, and I was just walking in laps, just building up my strength, building up my core strength, and I really didn't have a set distance in mind. I was just gonna go until I really couldn't go anymore. Kelly's off to the side sitting there and I'm going lap after lap after lap. And of course the fatigue starts to set in. My body's starting to shake. I'm starting to feel myself getting close to muscle failure. 
And I'm like, I got one more lap in me. You know, I got one more lap in me. And I'm turning the corner and I go to swing my prosthetic through. My foot hits the ground behind me. And immediately I know how this is going to end. My leg comes detached. I fall one way. The barbell goes another way. I knock over a rack of medicine balls, which sprinkle all through the gym. I smack the ground. I take out another physical therapist who is next to me. It was an absolute yard sale, a total disaster. I hit the ground. I do a quick assessment to make sure everything is still functioning. I'm fine. Physical therapist is fine. Everything in the facility had stopped. The engagement with the Yankees stopped. The other treatments that were going on stopped. But nobody actually came over to to help me, which is done by design. So barring something traumatic happening, the physical therapists at Walter Reed are going to allow you the opportunity to pick yourself up off the ground because that's going to happen. So eventually I do so, strap my leg back on, I make my way over to where Kelly was sitting, who hadn't moved a muscle, and she's like, are you, you, know, are you good? And I'm like, yeah, I think, you know, I didn't quite swing my hip all the way through, I think my, I caught my toe behind me, and she's like, yeah, that sounds right. Now go pick up all the medicine balls and then meet me over at the squat rack. So, kind of a funny story, but you know, it also, it also emphasizes a point that failure is necessary. And most people avoid failure at all costs. And they do so because it's difficult. They do so because it hurts. Because it's supposed to hurt. But the greats, those that have made it to the higher echelons of a particular skill or craft have recognized the value in failure to the point where they are actively seeking failure because they have recognized that it is within the failure itself that the wisdom is located. That is how we learn. We learn through discomfort, embarrassment, pain, failure. By failing, it allows us to extract that knowledge, learn from the mistakes, recreate our system, modify our system, ram that knowledge back into the system, and then continue working. So we're able to work smarter as we're working hard. A lethal one-two combination. I've been involved in combat sports for most of my life, boxing, wrestling, different martial arts, jiu-jitsu, MMA. And you know these, these training facilities, it's a revolving door. It's a revolving door. You know, whether an individual happens to watch some of a UFC fight uh, or just for some reason decides they want to get involved in grappling or jiu-jitsu or any one of these sports, they show up and within a day or two, you never see them again. Which is why most good facilities typically offer you know, a handful of free lessons or free classes to come try it out, see if it's for you. Because for many, for most actually, they come, they get a taste of it, they want nothing to do with it, and they never come back. While jiu-jitsu and MMA and boxing, while these are certainly physically demanding sports and ways of life for many, What keeps people from coming back is not the physical discomfort most of the time. What prevents them from coming back is the shock to their ego through the failure that they experience in repetition during that training. And it's an uncomfortable uncomfortable feeling. If you're on the ground and somebody's on top of you and you can neither fight 
or flight because you are out of options, that is an uncomfortable position. And for many, being put in that position over and over and over again, even though you have coaches, senseis, teammates, other students that have been there are all telling the newer individuals, this is part of the process, stick with it. You have to go through this discomfort. You have to go through these repeated failures. There's no other way to learn how to do this without that. An amazing community to be a part of, constantly messaging that, despite that, most will not return. It just can't take that level of discomfort, that level of failure, as it pertains to their pride, as it pertains to their own self-worth, as it pertains to their self-esteem. It's too detrimental. It's not, it's not for everybody, but it's an option for everybody. But in order to do that, whether you're talking about becoming a jiu-jitsu practitioner or whether you're talking about accomplishing any other goal in the world, in order to do that, we have to modify our relationship with failure. We can't avoid it. We must recognize its necessity, seek it out strategically, and when we fall, learn from the experience Learn why we fell, analyze, modify, adjust, and re-engage. When you become a person that can do that at repetition, how do you stop someone like that? How do you stop someone who is unwavering in their commitment to seek failure, learn from failure, and keep going? How do you stop someone who will do that? The answer is, you can't. 